Hello there you beautiful people and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever for yet another replay review! Last month people didn't send them in, so we're gonna do a two replay reviews this time. We've already watched one from Fluffy, and that was redeemed by Thurnus Haley as a sponsor. By the way, if you are a Patreon or, membership or channel member, if you want to, you can sponsor somebody else for a replay review. It can be literally anybody, the only thing is that other person has to consent. That other person has to tell me, yeah, you can do a replay review of me. Um, or I have to know them and they won't be upset if they do it. Like, there, there's some nuance there, but still. This one, of course, going with Thurnus Haley playing a, a team matchmaker uh, on Miracle. And we're going to slow this down. If you want to replay review, you can join the Patreon or the channel membership. It is a system where you... Give me a little bit of money and help support this channel and it does a lot and I want to give back to you with some entertain or so some entertaining but informative uh kind of videos where I go in and look at what these players are doing and decide and try and give you an idea, a glimpse into the mind of higher rated players, a glimpse into what they're doing and what their thought processes are, so you can apply it for your own games. Or for lower rated people, I try and directly tell them what they're doing wrong and how to improve at least a little bit. I try and give tips and advice for lower rated players on what they can do next. Thurnus, yet again, higher rated player, um, and I can't really give a tips or advice or say, hey, you need to do this. But I can because I know Thurnus and I know his weaknesses. He's not that great on land. He's a very good Navy player, but that's enough rambling. If you like like it subscribe if you want to see more dislike if you dislike it leave any suggestions down to below for any formatting or things you want me to discuss while doing these replay reviews and let's get into it so thurnus has an a weird opener and i don't watch these before but i found this opener very weird he is going for a air heavy opener um and as I said, I don't watch these beforehand, so I didn't know this until just now, but he already has first land, and he's going second and third air after his Hydro Rush. Admittedly, it's an Engineer doing it, and the Engineer has a pretty long few, five, uh, five P-Gens air, seven P-Gens air. So this will be built over a long period of time, but seems like a pretty air-heavy build for a slot where he should be land, and it's not like he has a, sl sl a slouch in his air position. He has Arreo, who we saw in another uh, another cast recently. Um, or wait, it's not Arreo. It's um, Arello, I think is... Ar it's Ariello? Ariello, I think is how he said it. If, if I'm still getting it wrong, probably. It's not about him, though. It's about Thurnus Haley. And his build early on, he is not stalling, which is pretty good. He does, I believe, have engineers out reclaim. No, he doesn't. He, so he's just not stalling. Looks like he might be struggling to spend his mass a little bit, but that's okay. As he starts walking, he has a little bit of reclaim going on, and he has engineers already out doing this. He has a raider coming in, and I think this was a pretty good setup, because he, you can see right here, he he's going engineer, mantis, engineer, scout, um, engineer... Engineer Mantis. So he's going to be able to get a few of these units up. He dealt with the raid. Unfortunately, he lost the engineer, but it's not a huge issue. As long as you're still producing engineers and you're not forgetting or slacking on your production, it doesn't set you back that far. And as you can see, he already has one en another engineer coming out here to continue his expansion efforts. He has his comm over here in the middle. There's a bit of reclaim right here. Um, and after he built the mechs, which died immediately, he's, uh, going to go ahead and start getting reclaim. You can see the manual reclaim here. If you're wondering how he does it, he selects a comm, he presses E on his keyboard, that's the default key binding for reclaim, and then you hold shift and you click everywhere inside the build range, and you can easily reclaim everything. That's how you do manual reclaim. And if you get the, uh, I can't remember the name of the mod, the ad additional camera set stuff, you can hold shift, see where the range is, you can move, and then, so, and whenever you hit E, it keeps it right here. So, like, right now, I, let's see, where's some reclaim? Right here, I want to get all this reclaim. I do this, I do a move order, I press E, and I click on each of these individually. Of course, it doesn't give you that information, but... 
Uh, it doesn't give the orders since it's a replay, but I'm trying to give you some advice on how he was doing that. At least the way I imagine he was doing it. Um, that's the most common way, the easiest way I've found to reclaim things. And I think it's E by default. Pretty sure E is the reclaim because R is repair. Um, and of course you can rebind anything using this key, this setup. I, I've already rebound everything to whatever I want. Um, but overall his build so far, pretty, I, I would say it's pretty decent. He ha I haven't noticed any major stalling, so that's good. And if you want examples of good builds, honestly, go look up any 2000 plus player on any map. They'll have the best build, almost guaranteed. They'll have one of the two or three optimal builds for that map. Speed and range on the way for Thernus Haley. And if you copy build orders uh, unit for unit, you can definitely do a lot better for yourself. Uh, you, you can, if you come in with a specific build order, it helps you. I don't think this was a specific build order out of Thernus. And I think him stalling power right now is avoidable. I think he can pause some stuff. He does pause his air factory and that seems to be enough. And I'm, and I'm really glad to see him doing this. Fluffy just stalled through a uh, upgrade. He's also pausing his upgrade temporarily. I guess waiting for a couple more P-Gens to be built. But he's going for speed and range. He needs to make sure he doesn't do this too slowly. He's up against somebody who presumably will be doing the same. And needs to make sure that he's not going to be stuck here on a 70 or 80% upgrade and have to cancel it. He, he is prioritizing unit production right now. He unpauses the upgrade and it does seem as though it's going to tax his power grid a little bit. But he can continue to cycle it. Uh, it's going down so slow he could continue to cycle it and avoid stalls by waiting for this power, ball to, power bar to fall to 500 or less power remaining. And switch it back to pause for a little bit and uh overall it does seem as though he's getting enough reclaim to even help out with this so i think he's gonna be fine uh with the upgrade i don't think he's gonna hard stall before it finishes but he's doing a very good job with man managing his eco and balancing it so take this as an example don't whenever you watch me on the stream don't do what i do do what thernus does with balancing his eco All right, so not really much to go on or talk about at this moment. Um, at the moment, it just seems as though he's getting these raids off, which this is a this is a pretty decent play. He sent he built a, enough units up here, and he had a radar set up, which props to anybody who builds radars early. You, I like to have my first radar around four minutes on land spammy maps i like to around four to five minutes i want a radar on the field and he got his radar up around that time maybe a little bit later but he did get it up and now he has himself a nice amount of vision and he saw that all of the units were clumping right here of course he didn't have perfect intel he didn't know it was right here but you can make an educated guess he decides to go in raid try and get some more territory and he's currently sitting on a territorial territorial advantage he has the advantage as far as map control is concerned and he's starting to fight with uh banan 2 in the middle and honestly he's putting a lot of hurt down onto the seraphim com and he's playing a bit aggressively what i would like to see is a shift g onto the onto the white com to mess up its pathing um but thernus decides to fall back i don't know if that's pathfinding fucking him right here or him actively deciding to walk away. Some units do show up over here. And he does have his own units in the north. Um, some units show up that were trying to defend the north for Banan 2. And Thernus is going to continue to throw some shots into the com and to some various units. But I think a shift G there would have secured a scalp. The question is, does he want to go for a scalp? Of course, Team Matchmaker, I know he only plays the uh, full share version of this, so... That's just personal information, and also, I mean, I can just, I can check it by hitting, um, I think it's F12 and full share. Uh, but it's the full share version of the team matchmaker, and it's pretty obvious that, you, yeah, he could have gotten a scalp. The question is, did he want to get that? The highest, the other highest rated player on the enemy team is over here in the south, and 
we saw in the last one how difficult it can be, even for higher rated players, to um, to manage bases that are on opposite sides of the map. And I think this is just, yeah, this is going to be a scalp. Banan 2 is going to die. Thurnus Haley playing very aggressively with the comm, and this is something I like to see. I really like to see you getting out there and using your comm aggressively, pushing the limits of what your comm's available, uh, your comm is capable of and i know i give thurnus shit there is a meme on stream where thurnus where we say my calm needs to be here anytime our calm is in a situation where it might die because he says that every time right before his calm dies and it happens it, it, it was happening like every game there for a little bit but he's gotten a little bit better at dealing with it as i said the, the, i don't know if i said this Thurnus is very much so a navy ma'am. He man, he like a navy ma'am. Thurnus, the navy ma'am. Uh, he's a navy man, and he likes playing naval maps. He likes boats. We have lot boat. He's the lot boat man. Well, the thing with lot boat is, wow, the enemy team is fucking collapsing. Why did he send this in as a replay review? If you want to send in a replay review, if you are one of the patrons or channel members, send in a loss. A loss. A hard-fought loss. A loss where you're like, I don't know what I could have done better to win. Send that in. Because sending in a stomp like I, like Thurnus did here, and I know it's not necessarily a stomp. Maybe something else happens. But sending in a stomp like he just, like it seems like he's sending in, you're not going to learn anything. Yes, you played better than the opponent. There are things you could improve on. Right now, Thurnus could probably do with phasing to T2 land. And also just kind of not having his comm so forward anymore. You've won your flank. You don't need to push for anything more. Uh, you just kind of need to put enough pressure here. Try and kill off some of this eco, which he's done. But he doesn't need to risk anything more. He doesn't need to risk it for the biscuit, so to say. And, uh... Oh, wait. No, that wasn't... Oh, I'm dumb. Okay, wait, 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 wait. The guy who died right here, in my defense, he died way closer to the enemy bases, but that dude was a teammate of Thurnus's. So I, I rescind my flame about this being a stomp, but I, I still think that Thurnus probably sent in a win, because I know Thurnus. And his ego just could not handle being criticized on a loss. So, if this is a win and I'm right, I'm not an asshole. If this is a loss and I'm wrong, I'm a huge asshole. But the good news is, I'm probably right. <laughs> put my money where my mouth is. Or I guess I'll put Thurnus's money where my mouth is. I'll put my shame where my mouth is. Okay? So, Thurnus is going to continue to use the guncom here, which, yet again, pretty good. Ilshava's showing up on the scene, sh scene should make Thurnus worry. His comm isn't particularly healthy, and he's just got a rank of vet, so he's not going to really able be able to get more health very quickly. But the comm is his best choice for killing off these Ilshavas. He doesn't have T2 land yet. Um, he is rushing a T2 land upgrade, which I think is the right call, and he's also doing a very good job over here. He's expanding to this territory. One thing I'd like to see him do, though, is get a, um, uh, get an air factory, or, or, get, or get a transport out of his air factory. Your air player is not taking these plateaus. Do it your damn self. Uh, and here in the background, we see some Corsairs trying to kill off the T3 power generator that's being built. Good news is this isn't going to kill off the T3 power generator unless, I don't know, uh, Thurnus has a stroke. He did very well. He was very aware of this. The T2 Pigeons did die and are yellow? Are yellow? I think that's how you say it. Are yellow um, has... Okay, he's not power stalling. I was going to say if he was power stalling this would be bad. He should just reclaim these T2 Pigeons that died. Um, but Thurnus did come over here and help, and that's a good thing. As I said, last replay review, and I'm going to continue to parrot the same things because people make the same mistakes at my level and below, play zoomed out so you notice things, or play with your mini-map real fucking big. I, I prefer playing zoomed out because playing with a big fucking mini-map, like, I've seen people legitimately play with a mini-map this big. It's kind of ridiculous. I think that, like... 
this is as big as I would go. And even then, I think that's about as big as I like. But you either need to pay attention to your minimap and use it, or zoom the fuck out and see things. Use your eyeballs. Strategic zoom exists for a reason, and if you're not using it, you're a scrub lord. Play zoomed out, or don't play at all. No, no, you can play zoomed in. It's okay. We, we, sub we respect the survival players. I'm thinking about doing a survival stream. I don't know how that would go, but seems like a fun time. Also going to do some Nomads streams here soon, so if you like Nomads, go ahead and check that out. Just going to do a shameless self-plug, because Icy's doing pretty good. He's in a mass stall right now, but he's also building a T2P gen, and he's not even really in a mass stall. He's kind of just playing really fucking well. Uh, things to improve on, I think he could be more greedy and have more engineers out on the field for things like Reclaim. I mean, there's still a lot of Reclaim on the field. I don't think you have enough factories just building engineers. Um, I like to have more factories building engineers personally. Stealth, I don't get the reasoning behind getting stealth now. If you're still trying to use your comm as a weapon, you're Cybran, you're not Seraphim, stop trying to act like one of those nasty fucking aliens, Thernus. I know you claim to be a Seraphim simp, but you aren't. Uh, you only play Cybran, and then there's one map where you play UEF, you're a Cybran simp. Uh, but, with this stealth bullshit, nah, you, the only reason you get this is you do not want to get sniped. If that's your reasoning, that's fine. But if your reasoning for this was, well, I'm getting stealth for the, for the, the HP so I can fight more with it, then you're fucking stupid and you're just gonna die. Um, it's 15 minutes, you're calm unless you're Seraphim or you have, like, one of, any of the other comms, really, that can, like, get really tanky. Um, as a Cybran, your comm is relegated to a Telesnipe or a RAS at this point. Or building, T3 is still valid, but it's not gonna do well on the front line. We'll put it that way. There's still some fighting going on here. Uh, Thurnus really needs to get himself up to... He's, he's up to a bunch of support factories now. He has four factories in total that can build T2 units. And I like this play. But the question is, is it greedy enough? Because currently he's under no pressure. As long as he has units, he's not going to lose territory. As long as he has a decent number of units. I'm wondering if he should be throwing so much mass into T2 units. And this is all subjective. I'm I'm more than happy to be told I'm wrong on this. But right now, with the intel that I have available to me, there's only a few Ilshavas on this flank. There's just a bunch of T1 spam. There's not going to be much more showing up over here anytime soon. There's not a ton of eco or anything set up. Why not eco really hard on your position right now? Um, either that or get up something to help this southern side. Because... Your southern side's kind of falling apart because uh, Pink is getting a hero uh, blaze run in. Uh, very reminiscent of RLO's blaze run from times past. And uh, yeah, he's th these blazes are getting a lot of value. Um, our yellow is here trying to help out. And I don't know why I'm looking at this. I'm reverting to type. I'm reverting to casting. Because Thurnus is kind of sitting here doing nothing. But that's okay. He can do nothing. He's earned the right to do nothing. Because he's gained enough of an advantage on this side. The question is, is he doing nothing well enough? Um, is he... It just... It still feels like he's not... eco whoring as hard as he could be. He's on the same eco as Pink. And Pink is actively fighting somebody still. Uh, Thurnus is not, and that's where my criticism comes from. You can play a lot more greedy, even with the information you have, and the decision-making that you have. Um, so that's my advice to you, Thurnus. Just be more greedy when you win your flank on land. You're a very greedy player normally. Why are you, like, being slow? Like, I know you're getting mechs upgrades still, but, like, still just feels like this is a, a bit slower than you normally would, and I also don't understand why you still have four factories producing T2 units. 
Unless you're going to do an attack. The, 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 I guess if he really just wants this area to be dead, this works. But killing off all of this area, you're not realistically going to hold it. Um, it's too close to, the, to Yellow's production and everything. They're not going to allow you to hold it. They'll fight really hard for it. If you want to break this position, I still think getting Eco and going T3 land or getting involved in air and winning air right now is your best bet. Or winning air harder. Over here in the east, it seems as though Thurnus is flirting with the idea of using all of these units. Like, I'm, I'm just to put it in perspective, you're you're sitting on like five thousand and, I mean, let's just let's just do this. You you built seven thousand mass worth of worth of land spam here. You're gonna kill. At best, 6,000 mass worth of shit on the enemy side. Like, at best, this goes through, you, and then you get stopped right after killing what was your opponent's base. It's 9,000 if I include a bunch of ASF, which you're not going to kill. It's only 6,000, so you're, you, you, you've spent more mass to kill this than it's worth. If you get the reclaim, sure, and you're doing really good, you're going to get all the reclaim, I think. Um, and you're maybe going to be able to hold on to this, but... If you don't hold on to this, it just seems like you invested a lot into T2 units that you could have invested into Eco. And I just like the longer term play of investing into Eco. Maybe I'm too much of an Eco whore. Uh, but I think if you win this early, this hard, and you stifle this base enough, you can kind of just do that. And now, over here on the eastern side, seems as though uh, Caligula is going to be able to hold you back. You're not going to be able to deal with this gun comm, especially once his units start showing up. So I think it's better to fall back and play a bit more defensive now. And you can, and of course, there's always the value of having units as a deterrent. These units are deterring any kind of attack on this eastern side and giving Thurnus kind of just a, hey, you can't attack me kind of situation. And I do like that now he's T3 and he is building bricks. He got T3 very, very quickly. Um, he's been focusing on it. He also has a tactical missile launcher, which... I think that's its first fire, and if it, yeah, I'm gonna judge this, because this is kind of a win harder move, and I don't know if win harder is what we need right now. It does seem as though he's gonna get a tactical missile launch, or, or get a T2 max. Which, yeah, you know what? At that point, I think you've probably paid off the, uh, the value of it. It seems as though he's also going to get this T2 mech, which just finished upgrading, so that mech is not going to pay itself off. So, I can respect it. I can respect uh, the tactical missile launcher. I don't think it was a waste. Um, I think that Caligula building T2 mechs on the front line was a bit silly, but still. I mean, I guess he didn't really have much of a choice. He doesn't have a lot of mechs. Um, overall, your opponent is now turtling quite quite hard yeah this is starting to turn into kind of a hard turtle and also there's going to be air units that show up here to defend if you attack so he needs to just build up a land force i think that this is a bad move okay so you just had three deceivers pop out of your factory these three deceivers don't do do literally nothing more than one deceiver have different cues on your fucking factories have one of these factories build flak, one of them build deceivers, and a third one build something else, or just build another flak or deceiver as their third, as their fourth unit or something, or fifth unit, if that's what you want instead. Um, that is something I'm going to preach. Don't do this shit, because then you end up in situations where those three deceivers pop out whenever the enemy is assaulting you, and you really wish those were three rhinos instead. Or it's three flak instead of three rhinos. Most of the time, the thing you want popping out of your factory when you're being attacked is gonna be Rhinos at T2, or your main assault vehicle. Um, the Flak over here are gonna kill off these Whalers, not particularly quickly, mind you, but it's gonna work. There's four Flak, the Whalers are gonna get a lot of damage done, they're gonna be able to focus down most of the, um, most of the bangers here, which you know. It is banger. Sky Slammer's also here. One of the whalers seems like it's gonna survive. 
the brick in the front eating a ton of point defense damage, which I don't think I don't think he's zoomed in enough and paying that much attention. I think he's probably, as I said, this is probably as zoomed in as he's getting right now, maybe a little bit more. But he's probably sitting around like at most this is his zoom in. And he's not paying attention to the exact damages and everything going on, so I'm not going to judge him for that. Uh, or judge him for positioning on his units in the fight. Um, because pathfinding is atrocious and having units specifically in like in the front or the back of your formations is just absolutely impossible. Um, without using formation move, which is its own can of worms and sucks. But this attack going very well for Thurnus. Let's go back to the base and see what his decisions are. I admittedly have been kind of slacking this this time, haven't been watching his eco, but I'm pretty sure it's been relatively balanced this entire time. He's managed to take over, and this is something everybody around my level of play can learn from. I think it's around 14 to 1500 global, of course, where players start doing this, or people who play lateral a lot, but just remembering to queue up all of these mexes in the front, he has... 11 T1 mechs and all of them are on the front. All of them are just super exposed way in the front. These 11 T1 mechs are giving him 20... No, they're giving him 33 mass a second. Right? Or no, no, no. They're, they're giving him 22 mass a second. 22 mass a second may not sound like a lot, but it's, it's a lot more than he'd have. It's like nearly uh, a sixth of his economy is that, so wouldn't wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad call his units have petered out here and he's left a huge reclaim field but he's killed off pretty much everything that caligula's dreamed of having and did have uh, of course it was really nice that uh our yellow decided to help him out over here um so overall thurnus he's playing a really good match and also didn't didn't i say didn't i say he sent in a win because he can't handle being criticized on a loss. That that fragile, fragile ego, Thurnus. You know I love you. Don't be butt hurt down in the comments. Actually, I thought it was really funny that you you were fine with me ragging on you in uh, in the first replay review. And these replay reviews are generally going to be positive. Um, I don't try and like tear people down. I'm messing with Thurnus a little bit, but it's not about tearing anybody down. It's about Pointing out the good things and not focusing on the bad. Because if we wanted to focus on the bad things, there's... I don't know. He's playing pretty well. He's playing to the point where there's nothing going inherently wrong. So I can't point out things he could have done better. Um, I think that he needs more flak right here. I would even maybe encourage building another T2 or T3 factory just for building AA. Or upgrading one of, one of these two factories in the back. Like this factory building Mantis. Do you really need a factory building Mantis and Medusa still? Thurnus. Like this is this is stupid. You either have these produce engineers. Which is what they're fucking supposed to. Kill them. Which this one's fine. Or kill them. Get the two mass storage and the extra efficiency. Or better yet. Turn it T2 and get more flak on the field. Or just get it building Sky Slammers, because Sky Slammers are like the best T1 mobile AA. He is still getting T3 Mexes, and he's assisting him, and he's balancing his economy while he does it. Right now, it looks like he's going to go into a stall, but he I'm sure he realizes that he can afford this. Because um, it's 4,600 mass, so there's no way he's going to stall before he runs out of mass. So he's pretty good. Two factories at T3. He does have scorpions in the mix, and he's doing two bricks to one scorpion. I know they're called bouncers, but I call them scorpions. Fuck it. Um, I think you could change this ratio up a little bit. I've I've been doing this ratio personally. I think that two bricks to one flak is better. And if you're gonna do the bangers, do three bricks to a banger, or not a banger, a uh, three bouncer. If you're gonna do bouncers, do three bricks. And one of these is three bricks to a bouncer. I think replacing this bouncer with a with a flak would be better because if they're strat bombing your units, you've already lost air so hard if you're if you can't be protected from strat bombers killing your units. Um Whereas gunships is a little bit more difficult because gunships can be used very easily to bait a very good air engagement. He lost a bunch of a bunch of mechs over here, but 
I guarantee you this one one really good thing that's gonna happen. Watch, all of these Ilshavas and uh, Harbingers are gonna die. Just give it a second. And the second that they die, you're gonna see a bunch of these mass extractors queued up if I know Thurnus. <laughs> or I'm just completely wrong and I'm being an asshole again and making Thurnus sound better than he is, which that is an asshole thing to do. Don't inflate people's egos. Unless it's mine. Inflate my ego all the time. Go tell me how beautiful and wonderful I am in the comments. You beautiful fucking people. Okay. Stop making me a liar, Thurnus, and re- Well, I guess I see why he's not re these mass extractors. But re the fucking mass extractors so I can feel good about myself. He's gonna queue him up. I know him. I know him too well for this. He's gone T3, or he's going T3 air, which, as I said, that's a, I think that's a good call. And as far as ecoing goes, he has the second highest eco in the game while being on one singular slot, so he's doing pretty fucking good, eco-wise. One brick versus three harbingers. Brick gonna lose by a lot. Poor brick. Where is your radar? Is that your... One of these radars needs to go T2 or T3. Um, and Omni is desperately needed by your team. I know that normally the air player does it, but like you need a fucking Omni. Build a fucking Omni. Your team doesn't have Omni. The best radar coverage you have is orange down here with a T2 radar. Like, you have no fucking idea. You can't even guesstimate how many ASF your opponent has. And sure, he's Cybran, and you can say, well, if he turns on the stealth field generator, well, then he's he's wasting power. You're forcing him to waste power. Which I think is a good thing. So do that. Get your fucking Omni. You have more than enough power to support an Omni. Okay, he's T3 uh, on the comm is finished. Scout for anti Oh, they have scouted a nuke. Um, did Fluffy, or not Fluffy, did Thurnus realize that there's a nuke in play? I mean, I guess he could be doing the thought process of, well, they won't nuke me. But you can clearly see a nuke down here in pink space. And it doesn't seem like anybody has an anti-nuke. Is there an anti-nuke? Am I just blind? Da, 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 da. Here's all of his structures. I don't see an anti nuke. No, I don't. No, no, I don't. Well, that's actually kind of unfortunate. He needs one. This could end very badly. Do you have a nuke loaded? Oh, not yet, but you will. Oh, you will. Um, I don't think anybody on Thurnus's team has an anti nuke, so. That's another thing to keep on top of, and it's hard. It's it's hard. It's not an easy game. I want to stress that right now. Like, all these criticisms I give... With Thurnus in particular, it's kind of nitpicking. Because whenever you reach the level that Thurnus is on, you have to nitpick. Uh, 15 to 1600, the differences between you and 2000s are the small things, and are the APM, and are the doing things quickly and knowing when to do them and how to do them you're gonna have a decent you have your eco balance properly you're building the right units you're just doing it all slower um that's the thing you do everything slower than a 19 or 19 or 100 or 2000 or even a 1700 well if you're slower you're gonna keep losing um that doesn't even necessarily mean apm you just need to do certain things faster and recognize what you need to do faster you need to as i said spend less time thinking and more time doing um and that's what i'm working on with my play right now is one balancing my eco and two getting more used to having a plan because i did i'm not i'm not great at thinking uh so having a plan helps me out a lot I'm not a smart man. Never have been. Never will be. And it's okay. You don't have to be smart to be good at video games. You don't have to be smart to be average at FAF. Most most of the most 1400 and 1500s are, aren't aren't even all that smart. 
Come on. Don't give a, don't give credit to people that's not due. Being smart and being good at a strategy game are two different things. So, he's starting to push forward over here. Yet again, the fact that he hasn't noticed the nuke is concerning. Uh, SML has been noticed, so... Our yellow has noticed the SML and the Czar. Um, the fact that Thurnus has decided, oh, I'm not going to react to a strategic missile launcher whenever he is one of the prime targets for a nuke is crazy to me. Uh, he's going double, er, double quantum gateway, which is a fine call. One is going to build RAS. Is this, if this also builds RAS, I think it's a bad call. I think it's a better call if you have one building RAS and one building any of the combat ones. For him in particular, I'd build the AA Cyberncom. But it seems he's forgotten it exists, which is not the greatest, but he's also probably managing something else because he's in a slight mass stall, which you can stall a, when you're at 300 mass a second. If you're stalling 15, 15 mass a second, you're not really stalling. Let's, let's be clear there. Over here in the southeast, he has his units over here. He's continuing to clean things up. Pink on the enemy team is producing a lot of issues for him. Pink has been fighting on every land front. The Tsar is on the way. I think Thurnus being in the air means that the Tsar is much less impactful. And we're going to speed this up a little bit because there's not really much to talk about. And I'm not intending for these replay reviews to be super long videos. Strategic launch detected. The question is, where does this go and where does it land? Because this could be huge. It's going to be going for our yellow, which this could be huge. It could mean a lot. Let's slow down. Is our yellow going to die to this? No, he's not. So currently this this situation is still fine um it sucks for our yellow but he's gonna have anti-nuke now and honestly this chances of the strategic missile launcher and pink in general uh living kind of low right now as there's a line of oblivion or obsidians here i'm gonna kill this off on the side that thurnus is on thurnus is front he's doing fine he still has enough aa here to kind of ward off at least gunships um and he has his own asf in the area to try and help him out and he's he's doing pretty good on the advance i think you could slow down and kill off these point defense one at a time uh from max range with the bricks because then you don't have to eat so much damage but i think he's just pushing forward as i said he's not necessarily zooming in and doing heavy micro which it is good to zoom in and do heavy micro but you can't be spending a significant amount of time doing that uh, you do need to play zoomed out a little bit more. And his air has his teammates have just uh, one air, so he shouldn't be worried about losing his air units, especially when if he's gonna kill off some air some some whalers. I think he should be pinging the air units to come help him out though. And um Pink has decided to control K after his base was eviscerated, annihilated. And in the middle, it seems as though Pink's units are going to push forward, but they're not really going to get very much for him. Our yellow was, for some reason, on a very happy trip to the middle. And Thurnus isn't stalling. It seems as though he did, unlike the other ones we've come in with this one, he did have a plan. And his plan from the beginning was to go for a a, a pretty heavy land spam kind of game i think the double air factory threw me off because i thought he was going to go for kind of like an air focus thing and he does go for t3 air but at every point in this game it does feel like more than the other two replays there was a defined plan for what he was going for he went for the land spam into attack uh and he played aggressive to kill the enemy calm okay he he completed that objective and he was already working on his next objective, which was go T2 land, do go T2 land spam, get rid of the base that formerly evolved, uh, belonged to my opponent, and expand into his territory. Good. Get that eco up. Keep continuing to eco up. Then he went for the T3 land spam and getting into T3 air and just trying to play the entire field. He's playing it very much so like a 1v1, um, like a 1v1 ladder match, and that's fine. Um, but 
it was just it, it it was a very defined and clear plan it was just the uh the details at some points were a little bit rough but overall it, it's a pretty it's a pretty good game played he's played a really good game and of course the higher in rating you go he is a 15 to 1600 on a 1600 on a good day the more often his games just look like a good game to me. Um, look like he's doing pretty well. Look like he's not making major mistakes. And there was no major mistakes this game. Um, Fluffy's game, I will add, didn't have any major mistakes either. Uh, Duelist game, more major mistakes is in my opinion. Um, I, I feel like I'm kind of trashing on Fluffy right now. Uh, I want to reiterate. Fluffy, in his replay review, Fluffy did fine. Fluffy did great. Fluffy managed multiple bases really well. Both Fluffy and Thurnus are these are replays we can look at and we can see the good things they've done. Thurnus did really well at at just identifying what he wanted to do next, and especially with balancing his eco, he never had a major stall, and he just kept it he kept it going. He kept the momentum going from that early win. There's a monkey lord here, and the response to it is he already has the response. He already has all of these. Oh my god, he went for the AA anti-air preset SACU. Oh, the mad lim the madman. He did it. He did what I said he should. That's that's beautiful. Wait, did you get the anti-air upgrade on this one? No, he didn't. He just got one anti-air preset. I think that's the coolest fucking upgrade, and I wish that the anti-air upgrade was on more comms. It was like on one of the base comps. Or even just more of the support commanders, honestly. I'd love to see it fire its little anti-air gun. But this game, for all intents and purposes, is over. So I'm going to go ahead and say thank you to the Patreons. You all are, of course, beautiful. Uh, thank you to the channel members as well. Also beautiful. Thank you to the viewers, subscribers, the likers, and dislikers. Thank you to everybody. I'm trying to get more content out for you, and I know that there's been a slew of replay reviews. I promise the casts are coming back, and I'm going to speed this up because this game is just over, and I'm... It, 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 I, I don't need to cover it anymore. You all get the gist. I've given you all of the information you need. It is a pretty cool game to watch, and I'm sure that here soon there's going to be a megalith walking up behind me or a large amount of bricks. Um, because I'm sure that Thurnus is going to be part of the death blow over here, and also when we zoom out, there's not much going on over here. So Thurnus sets up a soothsayer on the front line, which is an interesting call. I respect it. Now he's just now he's just showboating and styling. And we're gonna just follow this support commander. Is it gonna move up? Wow, the Gunther spam is mean. Okay. Let's go ahead and slow this down. I wanna see. Is it like a little missile launcher? I think it is. It's a little missile launcher. And that's the end of the game. Thank you all yet again for watching. Thank you to the Patreons. Thank you to Thurnus for being both a Patreon and a channel member. And you all have been beautiful. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, bye bye